да е повязан. А, от превод, а, от превод има ли нужда в а, стриминг или може би ще бъде технически трудно? Хайде да не го пускаме с превод от стриминга. Тук да го имам, ще бъде трудно за технически да се използва. Добре, заповядайте, Тамара. Татьяна. Okay, so first of all, I, I want to thank you for the invitation, for Vanya and actually for Violeta uh, too. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I want to take your question because I'm a physical education teacher. My first degree was physical education. But um, And the beginning, it was so related to sports, just to, to sports phase. Mm -hmm. So it's like a separate for the other subject for the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a, a thing for for for, um, for having goals. I mean, you have to be the first of the class. We have to win the championships or whatever. So it's no matter how it is changed now, I mean, for a couple of years or so, also, um, for a different kind of see the that curriculum, that it could, could see the holistic view of the human being. So it's not just physical education, so it's changed the name to physical education and uh, health. Help me, help me. Yes, but physical education and health. And health, yes. Um, it's moving. I mean, it's not, it's not the, the that it's resolved the problem, but it's moving. Yeah. Uh, Имаше ли нещо специално в някакъв момент, в който, от който започна този процес на а интегриране на това мислене за, за тялото като поведение и като отношение в дневния ред на физическото възпитание. В нашето училище, да давам пример, децата в а, часовете по физкултура а, възпроизвеждат малко или много състезателната парадигма. Състезават се или правят нещо, което наричат разкършване или раздвижване, което смятат, че сваля кръвното. А, но извън, извън, извън тези, този дневен ред, а друг не се забелязва и не се преподава в, в, в университет. А, с какво свързвате прехода от този ограничен възглед, който ние още все още изповядваме, към този човешки нормален възглед за тялото и физическата култура, който а, набира скоро звърчиви? Okay. Okay, And when the dictator's period ends, it starts changing. So um, it took so much time. I mean, it's in the in the 20s, 20s? Yeah, 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 yeah. 2000s. So, 2000s, sorry, the 2000s. It's changed a little bit, uh, not only in physical education curricula, also in the prime, in the preschool curricula too. Uh, and because it was a, it's a law, it's a, it's a part of the law, government law, to integrate all that uh, kids with uh, disabilities, mm -hmm. not to be a part. So mm -hmm. the teachers had to do some exchange the from. Uh, Разбрах, значи при вас пиночет си отишъл отдавна, при нас още не си отишъл. Поне от физическото изпитание. Окей. Но, ако ме позволите да 
interrupt. I think that these kind of conversations that we're having, uh, the kind of trainings that we have the opportunity to participate in today, uh, shows that your uh, society is also changing. It might look from your eyes that it is changing uh, slowly, uh, but if you think of history, when we stand uh, and say, oh, it has been 20 or 30 years, in the long run, in the history of the human being, it's just a second. So I think that <laughs> even though if it might feel like um, it's a tiny step, you're you're doing the first step or the second step, and that is leading you towards your goal. So thank you. Natalia, optimistic, and not optimistic. 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 Not optimistic.
uh, separated the body and the mind, is it all together? What's the understanding of the teachers? And if they see it as a separated um, element, then try to gather um, to a um, holistic vision. Um, because if, when you think about the social elements, the cognition, the emotional, the motor, as elements that do not communicate, that do not integrate the human being, we risk uh, of sentimentation on the educational process. And we are humans in, uh, in a holistic view. So why do we think that psychomotor intervention would help educators to address diversity? Why? Because psychomotricity is a discipline that we, we took the, the uh, definition of the European forms of psychomotricity. So it's a discipline that bases in a holistic way of the human being and on the relation between the body and the mind and integrate the psychical, psych, psych, ah, sorry, the psych, <laughs> physical, physical, emotional, and symbolic and cognitive interaction, and at the same time, uh, in the individual's capacity to be and to act in a bio, uh, psycho, social context. It is an approach that does not take place in one uh, moment of the lifetime, but it will throughout the lifetime, and it has different approach in terms of theories of praise. You can have interventions in the education field, self-preventive intervention, or you can have a, uh, intervention in the rehabilitation field or therapy, like more uh, a therapeutic approach, more um, specialized like in psychological uh, context, right? So, as we were saying before, Psychometricity will appear uh, uh, to the education field as um, a discipline that will provide or, or will share a frame and practice from where to uh, address the, the emergence. And why? Because psychometric interventions, they uh, focus on the connection of the cognitive, the social, the, and the psychomotor development. And it could go either through um, a relational uh, paradigm that is more um, connected to how does this person have, um, express itself? We call it uh, psychomotor uh, um, expressiveness, and it is the connection within the affective, the neuromotor, and the cognitive of the person that makes me unique in my way of behaving with others, interacting with space, interacting with time, interacting uh, with my own movements, interacting with uh, objects, right? So this will be more of a relational approach, or as we said before, you can be uh, working in um, a more rehabilitational uh, context, then you may focus more on the neuropsychological and cognitive uh, elements, and through an instrumental approach, could address the needs of those uh, through, again, without um, without uh, being the human, being, uh, seeing the person as a segmentation, but through a holistic approach. Are we cool or are we too fast? Okay. So how how we said today and yesterday, it's not one psychometricity or other psychometricity. It's just one psychometricity. So we have to choose which kind. Sorry? Strategy. strategy to use, it's the pain of the child that we have in front of us. And as for uh, interventions at school, as we said, it's a preventive approach. Um, we take promptly uh, elements that will allow us to take uh, pedagogical um, decisions in regards to how to plan our activities, how to adjust our body in order, to, in order to interact. And there's uh, an author that's called a uh, um, Spanish uh, psychotrician, Sarah uh, Bona, that kind of stated some of the guidelines of the preventive approach. So we, we, said we put some of them here, there are more, um, to promote self-image, to experience sensory motor pressure, and body control through movement, especially bodily and spontaneous play. 
we tend to or think of free play as adults as a moment of just joy and not uh, learning, and that is not the case. Um, in, but it is important to provide a context, the architectural context, but to allow the spontaneity to break, to, to raise from those things. Um, we aim to stimulate the development of the body schema, the self-awareness, to build a person's uh, self-image in a positive way, and to enhance creativity and to promote communicational and social competences. And you asked about what about Chile, how is it possible that we implement it? And here we have some of the materials that our government provided us. Um, that you will be able to explain a little bit further. Yeah, because we talk about the site uh, 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 of the civilization field, but in the other hand, have some elementary school, so they have the, the curricula that they change, so they have some fields that they cross, and one of these fields is it makes um, body, and movement. Movement. body and movement. So the teachers from the elementary school, they have to do all the classes, uh, for example, um, social uh, or mathematics through movement. So they have to integrate it. It's not separated. So they have to, they build the curricula integrated. It's not field, just like fields. So they have, they, they made some uh, booklets the, with the, the one of the importance of playing, the other one is the some oriented uh, how or to use right orientation dialect, how to use the the rooms for playing, and the other one, the last one was the observations like a key from the psychomotor education. We don't have psychomotricity like a, um, um, as we have CE or math or social. <laughs> But they integrated. So in this uh, QR, QR code. you can download them for free of this. They are they are uh, available for free from the website of our government. So education, as we all know, it's a complex system. There are many uh, actors that go along in this interaction. And why is that we say that psychometricity has uh, a play to a role, a role to play? in this uh, change because we focus from our framework on the interactions of the relationships. We think in a relation in a relational way. Not only our body as then how it moves, if it's sufficient or not, but how it's connected with my pleasure, how I use it to communicate. So the relational um, uh, it, the, the relations is uh, umbrella in our uh, frameworks. Um, and from uh, the neuroscience, you know that uh, when you are a teacher and you are teaching to your students, people get connected, we synchronize with each other, it's part of our human nature, and there are studies that show that when the teachers get to synchronize with their students, the learning experience is a very significant, significant learning experience, and that we can link it again to the relation. It's not only the content, it's not only the tools that I use, but the connection that makes us unique. <coughs> so we are, uh, we are, we aim, we claim ourselves as teachers and as psychometricians, as architects of contest. What we would like to do will be to bring this spontaneity and this autonomy in play, because we believe firmly that they have a role in the relational dynamics in the school system. Um, so in order to be able to allow this autonomy and this continuity to appear, adults need to be prepared. And how do we prepare? What, what is that we want to do? We want to have educators that have tools to observe, to accompany, but not to interfere, to be able to scaffold without um, thinking of their own needs or the, their requirements from the curriculum, but what is it that this kid has and how can I get him from this stage to the knowledge uh, in a very significant experience. So 
So, so, <laughs> so this is a question for you. Where does play live in educational institution? So maybe you can think one minute of that and share with us. If, if you feel that in your context, the room for play, where is it? Where do you find play in your context, in, in your school? In the corridors. All right, yeah, in the corridors. Yes, yes. yes. Right. Is that right? Where else can we find? Almost nowhere. Oh, nowhere? Almost okay. nowhere, okay. okay. There are a lot of schools which uh, play is forbidden. Okay. Also, running is forbidden. Yeah. Maybe there's someone for formal training. On formal training, yes. is perfect. All right, but none of us said within the classroom, right? No. <laughs> okay, so that's our challenge to change our view of play. The paradigm. The paradigm. We can think of play in a different way. We can think of play as a resource for observation, um, a resource that could give us. Um, elements to be able to understand the development of that child. And if we use it as a pedagogical resource for professionals, if we involve teachers in play, then they will be able to uh, empathize with their students. And from that change of attitude, then the planning will change and the educational uh, experience will change. So, sorry. So this is the, the same place. This is two people in the same place. So we can see one child is playing in the recess. And in the same place is a teacher that she's experimenting with the with the object with the material. With the material. This is from our training with uh, We are going to talk about that now. So our experience and our methodology working with educators as consultants, for us, that psychomotor intervention will be effective only if we have these three elements dialogue, right? So from in, in one point of view, it's a psycho-corporate trainee, that it's a formative process of self-knowledge. And it's so important when we, we, we use the theoretical framework and we the, the practicals at the same time because we have to feel it. For the other hand, we have the theory, the theory and we, I mean, it's not a method because it's not, it's not just a method that we can reply in every, in every part as the same, so we're going to to the different part, different schools, uh, because every school has a different culture. So we took that part of the culture and we see, uh, for example, where the the way I the teach the, the the way I the teach, uh, how many students they have, why they have that place for the I don't know the recess or they don't have, if they have material, if they they included the the parents or not, and so on. So, as Satyana said, uh, we gather this context uh, element, we address the uniqueness of each school, and we uh, build this connection between theory and buying experience, because we firmly believe that in the interaction of those two elements for the, uh, in the experience of the, of the teachers, we will find them uh, developing strategies and resources to address diversity. Uh, why? Because we will have educators as transactional inter interlocutors, transitional interlocutors, so they will be able to accompany their students. They will be able to empower their students. They will be able to empathize. They will have a deep, they will not be thinking about the content, but the relation and the meaningful uh, relationship that will be established through uh, this emotional uh, experience. <clears throat> so these are some examples of that because we, we wanted to share with you, I don't know if we have time for that. Yes, we are okay. Okay, so we propose some Devise and observe 
uh, respond and reflect on different um, scenarios. Uh, for example, we have, I mean, that, as we said at, at that slide, we have school A and school B, and they are so different. So we, we, I, I don't, we interviewed in one school with the uh, PE teacher, PE teachers, and in the other ones we intervened with the kindergarten other teachers. So the reality was very different, but we went through a framework that will help them to experience um, similar uh, experiences, but with different objectives. So, okay, so they were uh, invited to explore material, they were invited to rethink how to connect their experience with the materials and relating to the context or the elements that they have in their, in their schools. And also, to the, the invitation that we made them was to transcend the classroom. So we say, okay, perfect. As you said, a play it takes place outside of the classroom. It's in the recess. It's in the corridors. Okay, how can we take elements from what you see and bring it into the classroom? So for the student, it will be um, a transferential element. What happens in the classroom is not only content. I can use it in my daily life. I can use it for play. It is connected. So that's happened not from one day or from one week. So that happens through a couple of weeks. So they, they experiment and then they have to see what's happening with the students in their research, for example. And they, they try to get uh, in touch with uh, their own experience. So it's they transfer experience. So as we say, they have the opportunity to experiment with elements that they use on their daily activities. And then they have the opportunity to uh, connect it with the technical elements, uh, the elements from psychometricity, but also from education. And the result was lots of brainstorming about how to change their activity, their approach. Um, and what they did, for instance, in this case was to think of a whole unit. So how can we, how can we make significant uh, experiences from the playground into the classroom? Sorry. I will take the privilege of being closer to you and I will ask right now. Could you please explain uh, in terms of roles, who these uh, young uh, ladies are? Are they students or teachers? And no, they are teachers. We did not intervene with the students. So these are the teachers, teachers. The, teachers. the kindergarten and kindergarten grade grade teachers. teachers. Yes. And they are in the process of their training, psychological yes. training. Yes. After that, you expect them to bring some psychomotricity within their daily work with children. Yes. Yes. So they actually, they play, for example, they play, they have theoretical uh -huh. framework, and then they... And they play within the, the within the premises of the kindergarten. Yes. They in play order in to the experience place the kindergarten in a different way. Yes, because Thank they you. always have been, uh, for, for example, in the in the playground, they have always been like this. Yeah. Don't move, don't leave the other ones. Uh -huh. Okay, go, 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 go to the classroom. That's it. So we we push them to to experiment, to play with the yeah. material. Thank you. Yes, and after the, the experience, they went to their planning because uh, they planned very much ahead. So they looked at the plan and said, okay, if you had the opportunity to do it differently, what would you do? Which will be the change? Okay, let's try it. Let's test it and let's, let's role play. And that gave them uh, millions of ideas. So this kind of draft, they left them hanging on the, on the walls, on the areas where they used to um, do their actual work, like the planning, um, for them to kind of uh, be reminded that there's, there's the way that they have been doing it, and there's this window of opportunity to get out of the comfort zone and try different things. And with this uh, specific case of this school of the pre k uh, students, um, I'm sorry, the pre-K um, teachers. teachers, 
one of their biggest problem was uh, aggressions on the recess. Um, and so we we try to think along with them, uh, what materials do you have for recess? Which are your proposals? Which is your role in the interaction? What are you doing? How are you communicating? Which are your strategies? And again, experimenting and trying to, um, after the experience, uh, trying to see if they allow themselves to try different ways. And in the beginning, we, we talk about the, the playground. And it was a, play, a space that they never look at that place. So it was totally new because they, they thought that all the things, the important things, all happens in the classroom. So when we approach, we say, oh, what about the research? Mm -hmm. Oh, the research? But the, it's not our problem. Yes, it's part of the curriculum. Oh, yeah, really, it is. It is. So they start to think about the all the material. They don't have nothing in the, in the playground, actually. I mean, they have some... I they have some cars, they have some, some sandboxes, but and, and that's it. they have never thought about what interactions are actually going on there and which are the interactions that we will aim to have in our school. Because we have a culture, we have uh, this profile of the student that we want to uh, promote throughout their experience in this uh, specific college, uh, school. So how is our playground addressing to that profile? Mm -hmm. So we... <laughs> It was very, very interesting. And in this case, these are the uh, physical educational teachers um, that they are very used to a sport-oriented uh, class. Um, and for them to, again, to role play, to experiment, to go through this process of thinking of how, it, how are you relating with the object? How are you relating with time? How are you relating to your movement? Do you always move just to be perfect? or do you for pleasure? And when we started having that dialogue, things started to change, and they actually decided to open an opportunity for a psychomotor classroom, but they didn't have a psychometrician there, so they, they have a two-hour schedule for kids around <coughs> PE, and they decided to do one of the hours of, of PE uh, sports, and the other hour will be an, um, an experimental uh, psychometricity intervention. So they trained and they implemented it. Yeah, they trained for 40, 40 hours. 40 hours. It was a whole year of training. We did some supervision with them, work with materials, and now they, they have been doing that for two and a half years or something. From 2018. Yeah. Yes. So basically, what we are proposing is to rethink the how do we deal with the emerging and coming up again to diversity. If we try to teach for um, the standard, then we are not addressing the diversity. If I'm able to see you as a person, see your, uh, your challenges, but also see your opportunities, um, I will be able to connect with you in an emotional way that will make a significant um, experience in terms of education. So we propose to think of from a positive perspective, uh, not, not only an optimistic perspective, but a positive, in a positive paradigm of thinking of psychological um, terms. Um, with a growth mindset paradigm, of course, to ensure uh, emotional security because and especially with PE teachers, that was a very, uh, very large issue because they have standards. And when they have a kid that is not able to do what they are supposed to do, for instance, jump or shoot a ball, um, the, the emotional contention of that moment to them, it was very out of their um, abilities. Okay, if you couldn't do it, then you go to the back of the line and try harder. And then but what's happening to you with that thing, it was not something that they were thinking. Promoting, sorry, no, no. Okay, so promoting facility through movement because the, the movement is part of the life. I mean, movement is life. Promoting social emotional competence, addressing different, different learning style because nobody learns from the, the, the same way to the other.
So gradually, uh, those uh, physical education uh, professionals are going to measure uh, their work, their aims will increase up to these six uh, as uh, measures of, uh, of the meaning of what they are doing, not only um, the results of the tests uh, going, uh, throwing further and uh, jumping higher, but also do the child is uh, feeling secure, connected, uh, does he or she experience pleasure, which are the, which become the guiding questions alongside the others, which I think is is amazing as a as a development of the pedagogical. Yes, mindset. and it, it it hasn't been an easy path. We had um, people very. Um, uh, reluctant to the idea of, uh, of change uh, and how are we going to do it and it's a very valid point because if you feel that you haven't been trained for that I mean myself in your place I'll feel the same um, but it was very um, amazing how when the group started to connect to synchronize with this new way of viewing uh, students and approaching to uh, the learning process Gradually, they started to be available, right? And be willing to try. And we celebrated them very much because it, it's, it's very hard to take that risk, to, that leap of faith. Um, so, so, we, yeah, so. <laughs> so we, we saw some, oh, we visualized some change, for example, in the setting of the classroom and the recess area in both of the uh, schools, actually. Uh, in the pedagogical planning, including bodily experience, because that's what I said in the the, the uh, ministry gives that guideline, but I mean it, it took times to make a change, so they had to know. Uh, in the educational projects, including uh, psych watchers in the curricula for the students in between four and seven years almost, and in the relational dynamics of the educator because they they play together so they know difference. I mean it's not just my colleague, it's just my partner. <laughs> they learn from each other from those uh, painful experiences. So um, what we what we want to share with you is this vision that the BNS and the existing of the teachers it, it goes beyond, uh, as we said, uh, transferring content. Uh, it, it's not only standing in front of a course and being a, uh, an agent of knowledge, but being a transforming agent. And to be a transformative agent, you need to be present. To, need, to be present, you need to connect with yourself. You need to allow yourself as a part of that learning experience from different points of view. Um, you need to be able to connect with another one uh, through different uh, um, experiences. Uh, new forms of relationships and organization will take place if we are willing. Um, and as for our experience, this approach will make a, a significant impact because the connections uh, between the students and the teachers change so the culture of the school also changes because we we are involved in a uh, in a dynamic uh, systemic uh, environment. So if we start small change, as we said before, then the wheel is changing. And at the end, we realize that the emerged new corporality of the teachers they 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 feel different. So it's transformative. So for us uh, to address diversity will be through guaranteeing that the, the quality of the education, but it cannot be done if we don't establish real links between the educational system, the society, and the way that we communicate and we, we actually view and validate each other. So this teaching, teaching learning process uh, the models and the strategy, they need to continue evolving in order to address what emerges. And in the change, we will be able to value first, because we need to value, and then address diversity. So, 
Thank you very much. We have rushed. We made all time. We made all time. Thank you. Gracias. I have many a question and I I'll kind of expect that many of our colleagues will take their questions, so please go ahead. In the intervention that we, we work in the same school, um, our intervention is planned for pre-K uh, kids of four, five years, six, and seven. Uh, classroom, but in um, um, first grade and second grade, they have it as an extracurricular activity. So the um, the group is uh, it's reduced. It's only ten kids. Um, but for psychomotor intervention at school, uh, we we have groups of 24. Though that's the whole class. They have two hours of psychomotricity a week. So we decided to divide the groups in smaller groups of 12 so that we, we can actually be available and interact with them. Um, but, uh, yes, but the groups, the, the amount of uh, children depend, that it varies from one um, uh, school to the other. That, that will be our experience. Uh, but for instance, the uh, VE teachers that we have trained, they work uh, two PE teachers with the whole group, and their classes are 30, uh, 30 25, 25, 30 kids. So yes, yes. So when they have sports, the whole group is there, and when they have uh, psychometricity, the whole group is also there. So um, you can replicate to say it in a way in a smaller uh, group or in a larger group that will only uh, require you to have more adults available in order to be able to not supervise but to be um, uh, to be available for the kids. I was uh, impressed by the work with you started with and the work you ended with. And it was diversity. And I started to consider this um, engagement with diversity is something kind of multi-level and systemic because we know here in Bulgaria we have let's be diverse and whatever that, that could mean but uh, in your approach to diversity this is kind of uh, constant attention and not only attention but kind of a paradigm to uh, to address a diversity, which also implies that you should address your own diverse response to, to the, the, the diverse child, which is very noble. So, thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Polina Kvartanova, and I'm a national psychologist. I'm a part of the student support department, and uh, now uh, first, I would like to thank you for this comprehensive uh, presentation of the model. And um, what I was thinking uh, during your uh, while you uh, were presenting was um, uh, is this model um, applicable for school setting for students um, uh, age 13, 18? And uh, how, for example, to create a program or some kind of a guidance for PE teachers in our school, for example? Okay. <laughs> That's Five a minutes. good question. Um, uh, first of all, as far as we are concerned, the interventions that I know myself, I'm not for uh, you, but interventions with adolescents. Um, usually are in the theoretical context. Nevertheless, I, I, I think that the basis of this uh, discipline, of this model, will allow you to provide this kind of experiences. The only thing that you need to address is context. Context in regards to their 
um, uh, the, the things that are important for them. Because for a kid of four, five, six, seven years, the important, the, the important thing will be to master, uh, I don't know, jumping from heights, or it will be to uh, be able to play, yes, yeah, so to play in a symbolic way. But for adolescents, their interests might be a different. We have, you know, we also work together in the um, therapeutic field, and we work with adolescents. We work with adolescents with autism and our uh, uh, needs and uh, developmental uh, characteristics. And uh, for us, it's a challenge because we are very much used to uh, play with kids. But our first, the first thing that we say is that we cannot. I don't know, the, 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 we cannot make it childish. Because if you make it childish, you're not addressing diversity, but you're mocking, right? So, uh, but play is something that goes from, it, it is a kind of an, an expression. We express through movement, we dance. We love to dance, and also love to dance. Uh, there are some types of play that may be uh, more suitable, maybe room, place with more rules um, and less movement, or you can go through the experience like from uh, a lot of movement to less movement to more symbolical. But I mean, I think it will be a challenge, but I would totally recommend you to, to try, and we will be so very um, grateful to give you ideas and to talk further about this because uh, I, I really think it could be done. And you have to think that movement, it's not the action. It's movement, the psychic, you know? You move the psychic. Mm -hmm. So, yes, adolescents, they, they like, I mean, if you do some sports, for example, you can see it from the psychomotoric way, not just like a sporting way. So. You can be playing sports, playing football, for example, and then you can take them to reflection areas or to think about that. So it's a kind of way of a point of view difference. Yeah, like taking the focus out of the uh, winning or losing uh, element of the sport but uh, putting it into the relational uh, element. How do we feel when we're together? Is it the same if you're not there? Do we miss you? Uh, how, how it affects the group? Uh, do, we, do we do something when you're not there to um, kind of, I don't know, share? We, we, we uh, shoot a ball and we celebrate and we dedicate it to you because we think about you. And that, that is a very different way to view the same goal uh, as just say, okay, it's one goal for this thing. It's one point, right? It's a very different approach. May we expect and may we imagine uh, how a class uh, in physical education in a third grade uh, of children, which is around 10 years, how such a class uh, as a scenario of events would change after the teacher has uh, has been trained uh, with, within your training. How uh, you, you, I imagine that you have plenty of experience of this change in their behavior. How, how would they conduct a class of 45 minutes of physical education with these kids after sometimes after they uh, train after they've been trained by you. Could you give us a bit of example of the change that may be introduced by the teacher within his or her own practice with a group of kids of uh, 10, 10 years old? To the teachers. For the years. Yes. Um, okay, I. Let me think about it. Yes, maybe at the beginning they are just thinking about the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Just uh, I need to do this because I have written this, or they they ask me to I don't know have some uh, test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now I know I can see the difference or the needed 
so I can do a scalable process mm -hmm. to reach the, the, the goal, mm -hmm. that is the, the test, mm -hmm. you know? So I, it's not, it, it, the way I prepare them. So we discuss, we think about this, we prepare, we anticipate, we anticipate it, we make um, we structure the materials. Yes, um, but together. It's not. Mm -hmm. I know all the things, and you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. So we are both involved with that relation. The, the, the relation. If a parent is peeping out of the the, the wall to, to see what the teacher is doing to his kid, mm -hmm. if the, will this what kind of changes such a parent will notice in the behavior of the teacher and in, in, within the behavior of his uh, or her child when uh, kind of witnessing a class maybe, of physical education? Maybe more autonomy uh -huh. more for the children uh -huh. because, as, as I said, it's not like a teacher, he knows everything uh -huh. and I, it's an uh, asymmetrical uh, way, uh, it's, we are on that relation, mm -hmm. educational field, so we are contrasted together. So, yeah, they are more uh, autonomy. So, yeah, I was, uh, I, I was kind of trying to think of a concrete example. For instance, if you have a kid that is trying to do, um, like a, a, a wheel that we do in gymnastics, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So if you see the class, um, the the teacher most likely will say, okay, in order to do that, you have to come in this way. You have to put this uh, first feet and then the other one, put, put the hand, so on and so forth. It will be a very uh, asymmetrical way. If you think about from a psychomotor perspective, the teacher might say, okay, so what do you think a wheel is? How, 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 how do you imagine this movement? Okay, let's practice it. Okay, uh, okay, it, it looks a little bit like that, but, um, but you have to do it in that direction. So he will gather the things that they already do, and he will gradually transform it to the goal, right? Validating what they already have. So if you see it, Maybe from the outside perspective, you will see what, what's the teacher doing? Why is it not like one kid in front of the other one waiting in line doing the, the actual thing? That on the one hand. And one thing that I remember that from uh, training at the university with the e teachers, one of them said, um, when I started uh, to study psychometricity, uh, if a kid uh, was was supposed to do, I don't know, to jump uh, or to walk in a straight line and was not able to do it, I would say, okay, no, but I'll give them a chance once more, and if not, then he failed. And now I ask the kid, what happened before you entered this classroom? What happened? Did you argue with a friend? Were you afraid? Uh, where you, where, how do you feel? Do, you knew that we were going to have this exam. Okay, how that, how did that make you feel? Would you feel comfortable doing it with uh, a pair? And I will see. And then, or would you be comfortable? I don't know if you cannot do it in this scenario. What about doing it in the play yard? Right. So when you, that's a way to address diversity. Thank you. Thank you. Either with the very good or very bad. I don't know. Какво мислите, колеги? Отчаян ли сте? Добре, някои от вас изглеждат за там, че са родители. Някои от вас сигурно са учители, педагози. Какво мислите за тези неща, от поне от позициите имаме и младежи, имаме и деца? Какво мислите за това, което казаха колегите от гледната точка на, да, на педагози и на потребители на педагогическа компетентност като родители? 
Правите ли нещо подобно с родители, за да влязат и те в контакт с играта? Да, да. Защото ако са възрастени учителите, родителите също са възрастени. То е системен процес. framework when you work as a therapist as a psychomotor therapist with children does it occur or is it a rule or exception to intervene uh, within parents parental subsystem by doing something that will enable parents to be more playful with their children and to what extent this uh, capacity Sometimes it is good enough, sometimes it is very poor. What, uh, how this capacity of parents to play with their children is a resource, is a kind of 
uh, approach in your uh, overall therapeutic approach in given case? I mean, we must do it because it's a systemic point of view. So we, we, we need to work together with the family, with the other therapeutic, therapeutic frame, for example, psychologists or uh, language therapists, therapists, therapists or physiotherapists. Yes. Um, for example, in our case, we invite the parents mm -hmm. to, to the to the place to work to uh, sorry to play to experience the play. Mm -hmm. It's not straight. It's not easy. So mm -hmm. we approach very slowly to that moment. Um, we plan it and we thinking and we struggle for for a very long time. Uh, but because we just see the, the child once a week, uh -huh. and they, they, I mean, they are all the rest of the time there. But uh, it's it's necessary to do it. It's I mean, it's the goal. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, and it's also a challenge because when we um, open this area. I mean, we never receive the parents and say, "Oh, okay, you know what? Today you're playing with your kid. Let's take your shoes up and get into the classroom." Uh, but we, we, when we have interviews, we talk a little bit about what, what is the relationship uh, in between the, uh, between the parents with the kid. What, what activities do they, do they engage in if they play and. Uh, most of the men say, oh, I, I don't play, and we kind of blend the, the question, so how was your uh, childhood? Did your parents play with you? Because, we, again, we, um, we validate that they may not be playful with their kids because they may have not had that experience. Um, and so when you, when you address that diversity, they kind of feel a little bit lo more lucid, and what we say is that okay, this is a, uh, you brought your kid. We this is his or uh, her uh, therapy, and I we firmly we believe that it will be um, uh, very uh, important for him or her to play with you. But we are going to plan it, and it has to come uh, from the kid the invitation to uh, have their parents or their siblings also, um, and it's. It's in within a framework, and we always say there's no magical recipe for playing, but uh, take a leap of faith and allow yourself to enjoy, not thinking and try not to feel evaluated. So it is a big challenge. We do it. We think it is essential, uh, but we always have to keep the framework and the focus that the therapy in these specific cases is for the kid. We work with family, but the, the, our patient is the kid. We cannot uh, forget that that is our aim. Um, sorry, um, I, I said it's not just movement because the parents, I mean the adults, they are so ashamed to move in front of the other. So maybe you can play uh, through words, to sing. I don't know, there's some many kind of playing. Yeah, is it going from an structured game to uh, spontaneous uh, activity. Mm -hmm. So we, we always try to set the framework. And again, as I told her, we need to address the, the, the interests. If we know that the parent likes sports, then maybe sports could be integrated in that. Because if I feel that there is something that I am interested in within this scenario, then I'll, my disposition will be different. When you measure some therapeutic progress in a given case with child, in the many items that you may possibly uh, measure, is there probably there is a place to measure the progress and the amount and quality of play between child and parents that usually we would expect would increase after your intervention? being only focused on mainly on the child, but as a, as a good result of therapy, I kind of hope that the child and the parent will play better in the, in the course of the therapy if it is, if it is progress as well. 
I'm not sure if they will pay uh, more, uh -huh. but I, I, for certain, our goal will be for them to relate in a more healthy uh, okay. way. Uh, because uh, play in that case, it's the scenario for the connection. Mm -hmm. it, it's not important the, the theme of the play or if it is symbolic or if it is uh, sportive, or, mm -hmm. but that we are allowing ourselves to be in the here and now and into the pleasurable activity of sharing time with each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that opens a window for us to build a trust, a trust worth it relationship, mm -hmm. uh, a very, um, Yes, because when you play, for instance, I don't know, when you play hide and seek, that mm -hmm. is a very common game. I need to be certain that I will hide and you will look for me. Mm -hmm. And that is the basis in the relationship that goes to the very, very, very beginning of the mother holding the baby. So it's, it's very much connected. I, I want to say that they will play more, but they will have a healthier relationship. I would like to share uh, an observation is, uh, from uh, the role of a parent. And um, what I, uh, my daughter is uh, three and a half. And uh, what I see is that uh, like uh, some um, major uh, parts of her identity are uh, forming through uh, playing. And um, to play movement uh, and while she is active. And um, if I want to find her, I just, um, uh, as you said, uh, I just have to play with her or explore her uh, while she's playing. And um, um, that is how I, I um, connect with her personality. It's very strange, but um, most of the time when she's playing, I can see her forming her identity. It's, with, it's in the play somehow, it's in, the pro, in, in this process. Definitely. Which is amazing, and it's, uh, I just cannot explain it. it it's an uh, experience, very, very interesting and um, working. I don't know how to say it, but I think that you understand. It, it happens a lot with, with kids with, when we interact with the uh, educators. That they say they, they, I don't know, when, when they first start uh, with four years, they arrive to school and they're immediately say, oh, that, that, that will, that one loves movement, that is, very, that one's very shy. And when they leave the classroom and they come to the psychotricity classroom, and then, uh, I, as we said, we work, uh, psychotricity and uh, the educator together in our school. Um, so many, many times it happens that they say, oh my God, she has a voice. She loves to play with others. Uh, no, because in, in the classroom she's very shy. She's very um, uh, willing to help others, but it, it's very hesitant to to uh, to expound her ideas. But in play, she's very directive, and, and the reason is because in that play uh, environment, it, it is an environment for us to try and fail and try within a context that will not affect the real life. And that's the magic of play. It, it gives us, if we have, we are in a um, safe environment in, in, in terms of emotionality, um, it gives us the opportunity to become and to explore our, uh, our uh, skills. Yeah, what does she call you? Ah, it's a very good beautiful turnover for Training for the teacher, what is happening? Is it part of the university curriculum or is part of extra training that they have to apply for the five day sales or the government is paying for this? Okay, this is a very good question because these two schools are private. Yeah. So they made us a training. Training. Yeah. And the private school pay for this training for the teacher. Yes. But you don't have it at the university program for the teachers. Um, there's uh, psychomotricity as a subject within the training of educators, but it's more connected to the psychomotor development of the human being, like um, the, the 
biological and cognitive development rather than the discipline. Uh, as, this, as far as from discipline, you can uh, study psychometricity in certain universities. Um, they are not uh, part of the state. However, I would like to again um, put a positive uh, uh, point of view to, towards that our uh, society is changing toward, towards a um, holistic view of the learning process. So our ministry has established, as we showed, this uh, basis for education that has this interaction between, for instance, the content and body movement, or uh, physical education and health. So we are kind of trying to change. And there's also the booklet that if the school in its own uh, educational project wants to implement it, there are some guidelines, but it is not something that is part of the educational system in contrast to other countries where it is, for instance, in Uruguay or in uh, Argentina, all right? where you can find it as part of the curriculum. Yeah, after the, I mean, I agree with that, but I, I think that you need some experience working and failing and working and doing things, and then you will realize that you can change. So, so they have some curriculum with the university, some of them, some of them. Some uh, can pay for uh, extra training, and some can apply for some kind of project, government project for this. Those are the three. I mean, you you okay. either have it uh, as part of your curriculum in education, but as I said, it's yeah. not the discipline. Yeah. Uh, once you finish your uh, degree in education or in any health area, you can go and take a post. Uh, uh, post education like a uh, like master in psychometricity and then use the tools to implement it in your context. Uh, but it's not, as we said, part of the actual curriculum. It's not that we we have it established. However, we are kind of slowly, very, very slowly going towards that. Hopefully we, we hope. Uh, because as we said, the government saw the need and gather specialists that started discussing, and especially after COVID, of the need of uh, uh, addressing movement and um, uh, emotions and skills. So um, they, they are going towards this uh, better uh, educational uh, politics. Professor Gurevich, Professor Angeles, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.